Facebook days, what mm-hmm. I was supposed to do was make a mixtape and put it on that Piff. Mm-hmm. And then that Piff, I would have blown up and I would have been sitting right with fucking Nicki Minaj. That's facts. We would have been eating and hooraying and hooraying. <laughs> What they go do with me now? I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down. We turn the smiles in the frown. Let's get to it. Had to get a bigger bag, now I'm back, so let's do this. Anybody talking down on me, they gotta be stupid. Me and Gates is moving silence. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you here for another interview with Talk of the Town. And today, I have the beautiful... Young Ash, the OG. You already know what's up. Yes, we have Young Ash in the building, and I am so excited to have you here. Me too. Y'all lit. Girl, I feel like I literally, like, grew up with you. I'm not even gonna front. Like... I like taking it back to like the Mesa Dessa Bronx yeah. whining days, bro. Like you did your jump off in uh jump off freestyle. You remember with me, bro? Yes, bro. Ash been around. Yeah, she been outside. Fact. So how has it been like coming from that age of like the Bronx whining and the early, early freestyling days to now? So honestly, it's been awesome. It's been mm-hmm. a roller coaster, I shall say. Like it's been ups, down, left, rights, corners. But I'm going to be honest, as long as you stay neutral and real and loyal to yourself, Mm -hmm. you're always going to be good. And that's something that kept me uplifted and relevant all these years. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never tied down. Like, look, even at the time when Facebook fame was a thing, it's like you had all these different freaking dance crews. You had Vivo, you had Dessa, you had TCO, you had all this different stuff. And they used to want me to tie down, but... Nah, so you see me here, you see me there, you see me, because once you get tied down to some click crew block, it's like now you got your beef is my beef. Nah, right, nah, nah, nah. right, right. No, you definitely do a very good job of staying relevant. Like, even back then, you was doing your freestyles, you was in the J. John video. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like, you're like a known face. Like, yeah. people just know your face, they know your name. So, like, you've done an amazing job even Thank up you. until now with just staying relevant. So, tell me... How did you first get into, like, starting your freestyles and making your music? Wow, so, all right, I used to write poetry, right? Mm -hmm. So I used to write poems, so I used to always make songs a cappella, but they were poems, Mm -hmm. so it was still rhyme, you Mm -hmm. feel me? So, basically, I grew up in a very strict household. Like, I wasn't allowed to have Facebook. I wasn't allowed to have MySpace, so I used to make a sneaky one. Mm -hmm. I made a sneaky account (laughs) at 16, right? Uh Uh-huh. So... I was doing freestyles, and it was, like, to Nicki Minaj beats, Jay-Z, Monster, like, little beats like that. Mm -hmm. And it had its 80 likes. So on Facebook, on private, 80 was a lot at 2012, 2013. So it's funny because it got back to my pops. Like, I think one of my uncles snitched, I ain't gonna lie. So my pops, like, he heard it, but then he seen the interaction. He seen Mm -hmm. it had, like, 50 comments. So he's like, all right, at least she not whack. Like, right. like, <laughs> at least she cursing, but she good and right, getting close. Right. So once my pops agreed with it, it was up from there. Like, so there was this one girl, her name was Briella. Yes, Briella Story. Mama. Mm-hmm. So Briella, Miss Briella, like, she was getting bullied because, you know, she had a grown-ass woman body at yep. the time. She was, like, 13 years old, and she got exposed mm-hmm. on nudity, like, I'm a, bo- a boo or whatever. So she asked me to write her a song. Mm-hmm. So I asked her, like, I asked her, like, do you want a fast beat, slow beat? Just tell me the story. So I took the story. That same night, this was the first time I ever experienced Facebook fame. That same night, it went to, like, 40,000 on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It was at, like, 2,000 shares. By the two days later, people coming up to me and for them. All this was brand new to me. Because remember... I was very, like, strict. I mean, and even, like, off of that, we weren't even at the time with social media that we are now. So that just goes to show how strong it was. Like, the word got around real, real quick. quick. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it became, like, I was kids' school lunch table conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's a different type of pool because now it's, like, in school, everybody talking about me. And I'm the same age. Like, I was still 17 and 16 at the time. So... I just knew it was going to work because, like, see, in school, I was always, like, on the road. So, by senior year, I only had two classes. So, I would do my classes, then I'm going home to write. Mm -hmm. I was very passionate about making music. So, regardless, after I started releasing, freestyles only because it's ridiculous. I still never did a mixtape, an album. I always did just singles and freestyles. Mm -hmm. It started taking off, like... 
by then that's when kids started dance or mm-hmm. whatever was a thing mm-hmm. and it's funny how the tables turned because at first i had asked them like for feature prices these niggas gonna tell me 3k but as a month went by and I'm dropping freestyles, they came to me now and was like, oh, we're going to give you the feature they for free. They saw you doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Feel me? See, at the time, I was so humble, but I should have dubbed them. I should have dubbed it. Like, oh, now you want to work, but I don't look, I don't burn bridges. Like, right. I always look at it like, all right, you know what? You came back. And everything is a blessing in disguise because I took all their fans. Like, the minute I did that. It was literally God's timing. I mean, yeah. you know, everything in the moment isn't going to be for you. But you see exactly what happened. You knew. Exactly. Something in you knew not to yeah. take it there, and then it worked out for you in the exactly. long run. So, I know you was doing your, free, your freestyles initially. So, what's, what's usually your inspiration for the freestyles that you make? My feelings. My feelings, mm-hmm. like, cause I, I, when I speak, I have this, like, a, people have this bad tendency to think I'm grimy as hell. Mm-hmm. Like my tone of voice, the way I approach, I'm very aggressive sometimes. So <laughs> it sounds like I'm angry, but I really don't be tight. So when I realized when I talk, people got ego. Mm-hmm. So when I speak, they feel like, oh, she thinks she all that, or she thinks she this, or why are you talking to me like that? So I realized, like, all right, I'm gonna put it in. A, in lyrics mm-hmm. and when I speak in lyrics because it's beat people's they, they ego feel, free right. right now because they listening to a song with judgment and when I'm speaking real words is like all oh, right rock with her mm-hmm. so that's what it was for me like the inspiration really came from my feelings what I go through what I can't say without putting it in a song type of time mm-hmm. so it's interesting that you say like you know you're so aggressive and stuff like that because i know with a lot of female artists it's like a lot of they feel like a lot of people take advantage of i guess their vulnerability and people thinking that they could just run all over them so what's your experience been like as a female artist so me i don't got daddy issues thank god so <laughs> shit i do <laughs> So it's hard Mm -hmm. to try to bribe me or try to give me the facade of, oh, yo, I could put you on to this. I could put myself on. I did put myself on. I buy myself shit. So Mm -hmm. it's like people, men, men is very shysty in this industry. And it's funny because it's like if I don't fuck you, you not playing my song. And if I don't suck you, you ain't putting me on. Right, right. And I go through that a whole lot. But I've learned to be more feminine Mm. because... At the time, when I was a youngin, like, I was looking at it like, oh, that's fucked up, that's this. But then I'm like, no, I'm actually 10 steps ahead because I know what you're thinking with. Mm-hmm. And I know what you want. So when you're vulnerable, yes, I went through a lot of situations where men just closed the door in my face, like, straight up abandonment. Like, that I used to think, like, damn, is it me? Like, maybe, I never felt to give up. Mm-hmm. I never had that thought, but I always felt like, damn, I got to probably be more sexy or or I got to be more nicer. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started becoming more feminine. Because I realized, not no funny, a nigga will punch you in your face. Like, if you sit here and be like, yo, my nigga, a nigga will dead ass be like, yo, bitch, what? And if you punch me in my face, it's true. It is my fault. Why am I talking to you like I'm you? I'm not your equal. No, No. we're not. No. Females... In the, and we're not going to get that mistaken. Females and males are equal, but not no, when I it know, comes not to... Not physically. Physically. Not physically. Not when it comes to talking to you like a man. Because if I see him be like, yo, my nigga, and I dap you up, it's all oh, this bitch a thotty, I bet. Like, <laughs> not no a thotty. I, I, <laughs> yeah, not a thotty. Like, so <laughs> I learned because I have a very aggressive tone of voice mm-hmm. to be feminine. So I've always, for years, I've called men king. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I could violate you, but call you a king in the end, and I know your ego going to feel that, mm-hmm. and it's annoying, but mm-hmm. I learned how to talk to ego I'm now. I'm disrespecting like, you with grace exactly. if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so I know there was, like, a lapse between, um, I think you put out, like, one freestyle, I think it was, like, wait a minute, and then you started making music, like, this year. Yeah. So what, what was taking up your time in the meantime? What was you doing? <sighs> all right, so... <laughs> So that gap, yes, I went through a gap. Mm-hmm. Like, that probably was when I was 21. So basically, I, as you start getting bigger, you start meeting different labels. You start meeting freaking scumbag-ass people that they're distributors, that they're this, they're that. So because I was so secluded, I had a cousin that was putting me on, like working with me, and he put me on to these people. And that crew... The first year, we, we shook it up. That's when we had all the different ride or die. That's when we did the wait a minute. That's mm-hmm. when we was really consistent. Mm-hmm. But as the deal started talking, they got greedy and they fucked everything up for me. Mm. So when they fucked everything up for me, 
I wasn't aware of this because I wasn't in the meetings. Right. So, you know, when you got management, when you got people that represent you, if they're snakes, I'm the one that gets held accountable. Right. Not them Not because the you're talking about young Ash, so... If you come in and being like, yo, I need 100000 for Young Ash, but then Young Ash is not posting shit about y'all, I get held accountable, but see, Ash never knew about this You didn't even know meetings. what was going on, right? So, after I started finding out, um, it was already, I was probably like 22 now, so around there, I started scamming mm -hmm. at 22, right? Mm -hmm. So, me, I've always, I've always looked at making it as financial freedom. Right. So, I don't look at making it as fame. As old shady room. I'm not a shady it's bitch. It's the dollar so dollar bill. It's like, um, yeah, I've always looked at it. As long as I'm financially free, right. I'm good. Like, as long as my mom is good, my parents is good, my family, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So, at 22, I met this one guy. And he was so awesome. Like, he's an ex now, but he was great. Not dead ass. Like, let's say I met him today by Thursday. He took me to Cali. He okay. bought me this. He, he, was just, he was a real man. Like, that okay. was a man, right? Now, so, you met this guy, like, on some, like, romantic shit? Or you met him on just like that was like one of your bros. Romantic. Okay, oh, okay, no, okay. Oh, he was flying you out. Yeah, he was flying me out. Okay, he was doing what needed to be done. Flew out. I was a flew out. Okay. Ass. But, no, I've always been a lover girl. If mm -hmm. now at 26, I'm greasing men. That's mm -hmm. facts. But, no, I was always a lover girl. I used to wear my heart on my sleeve. So, no, sun was lit. So, he was like just lit. So, he had me everywhere and we was very private doing it. Mm -hmm. So, around then, like, I had so much money that it was like music to me. It was like, oh, no, I don't got to do this no more. I'm right, not good. Right. I can retire at 22. Like, <laughs> but then at 23, I got indicted. Mm -hmm. Right? So I got indicted at 23. So when I got indicted, this nigga dead ass deleted all our pictures. Nah. Nigga got scary. <laughs> Yo, you see how these niggas be what doing? What do me? Like, this nigga got so scary. He deleted all our pictures. He, he like... I was scared now. Like, now, no, I don't want to take a flight with you. I don't know. No, I'm being watched. Like, now I knew they were watching me for a year. So I'm like, mm -hmm. no, we can't move like that. So on my birthday month, so that's, let's say I got indicted in July. My birthday is September. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to go to Puerto Rico with him. And it was a, it was going to be a pop trip. I'm like, nah, nigga, you bugging. Like, if I get caught with anything right now, I'm going away. They're giving me three, like, is it right? Dog, like, and you already knew what the fuck was going on because yeah. you knew to delete the pictures. You knew to do all of that. You ain't want to do and nothing. And now, right. And, and now, now you're trying to loop me into the shit. It's still trying to bring me in now. You wild. Right. Like, I, this was, it's real fresh. It's too soon. So, son, our dad didn't go with son. He dad took another bitch, like. He took another bitch on my birthday month to Puerto Rico. Like. Uh-uh. And I know they've been to Puerto Rico. So, I'm like... Oh, no, that shit broke my heart. So from there, I dubbed him. Uh -huh. I dubbed him. I found out that girls' intuition, please don't lie. No, don't lie. absolutely not. That it doesn't lie. Believe yourselves. Time. Trust me, it's real. Because I found the picture. I found the girl, and, I, and he was still lying. Mm -hmm. And that kind of scares me because it's like, damn, if I'm 70, you're going to put me in a crazy house. And you're going to have me think I'm lying. Like, Girl, me? we all been there. I got to stop. We'll talk about right? it. Right? So that's show. the break. That's the break. So remember, that's like 22, 23 now. 24, remember, once I got indicted, I had to go low. Yeah, I had to go low. That ass, yeah, now nah, I had to go low. Like, I had to go low. Because now it was like, they raped me. Like, they straight up, oh, young Ash lowered her fans. I'm like, what the fuck I did it? Y'all knew what y'all was doing. Right. I told him. Right. I told him, oh, y'all, you put in a check in your card. You knew you was the one taking the money out. They know. And niggas is on game. Let's stop playing. They knew what they Let's were doing. stop playing. I never swindled nobody. I never lied to nobody. I ain't swindled them. I ain't used my fame for nothing. I kept mm -hmm. it a buck. Like, Let's clear it up just in case anybody No, was I, they knew. What, and they were the ones taking the money out. So And they got paid. So y'all just got scared and y'all snitched on me. Mm -hmm. But it's all right because you feel me? But y'all knew what y'all was doing. That's why I got. That's why I was okay. Cause my story dead ass match. Like mm -hmm. after that, twenty three, I got. I had to go to humble Valley. Cause now, as young Ash is lowering her fans, I couldn't keep shitting on niggas. Cause now it became like, it couldn't look like I ain't kid. Right. So I needed the 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 folks to understand the white folks. Like, nah, I kid, I kid. No, I know. I'm very one to hold myself accountable. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know what I'm doing. And at the time, I was working with a publishing company. And they had, they were, they weren't white, but they looked white. Okay. So it works. Mm -hmm. It works. It's very, pre it's very grimy out here, but Hell it yeah. works. You feel me? After that, a year passed. Now I'm 24. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I pled guilty in July, thank God for COVID, and no thank God for COVID, because I understand a lot of people died, but thank God for me, for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Take that yeah. exactly how she meant yeah, it, all right? Yeah, thank exactly God for me for COVID, because you know, my probation, y'all, was supposed to be, I was supposed to go to like 40 schools and tell people not to scan. God <laughs> damn. Let me take a shot. <laughs> I was supposed to tell Woo! people not to scan, right? Well, when COVID happened, guess what? All the schools got shut down. Cheers to that, right? I'm gonna take my visual. Cheers to that. The probation, instead of the 40 schools, it just went down to five videos. Okay. Shit. Facts, my dry need to snitch on nobody. I got snitched on. I was a walking testimony because I got indicted with six people I never even met. Mm. Ever even knew of, thank God. But that worked for me because it's like, I don't want to know y'all names. And, and there's no relation. There's no connection y'all, between we, y'all you Y'all not here because of me and I'm not here because of y'all. So right. it, it, it still protected my street credibility because it's like, nah. And even me being so authentic, even when I was doing the videos, I was like, don't scam because you will get caught like me. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even some real like scripted joint. Right, they right. They literally trusted me to make the video. The video only had to be like two minutes and... I did my five videos and no cap, tap on the wrist, and I was good. And after that, like, now, mm-hmm. at 25, right? So 25 came. Now I can pop out again. I can start shitting on niggas again. Yes. I can talk what I want to talk again. Like, it's like the switch went back on now. So now I'm like, all right. So from 24, that's when I started doing the advice videos. You remember, I used to always talk shit. Oh, yeah. I gave advice. <laughs> so yeah I used to talk shit uh-huh. but I started giving advice cause I'm like alright right now they think I lowered my fans you can't hate on the bitch you relate to mm-hmm. so yeah you cannot like me but if I'm telling you some shit that hits home you gotta fuck with me whether it's you fucking with me cause of that video but it's something that hit home you feel me so right. that's why I started giving advice cause it's like nah I gotta clean this up like a lot of people looking at me like a menace to society so once I started giving advice like, everybody forgot about this shit that's why I should don't worry about shit that happens to y'all because Three months later, you give them another story, you good. Like, mm-hmm. this is the industry. They is, is clout. It's, yeah. They ride away. So now, at 26, because I cleaned all that up, then I got deleted again. Oh, yeah, Pete. Mm-hmm. I deleted again. But in September 7th, so it's a month. Mm-hmm. I made 17K in a month mm-hmm. organically. I've always stood organic. All that buying shit blows mine. I feel mm-hmm. like that's so fake. But it's all right. We stay organic. Boom. Now, 2022, I'm going to finally give them the album the mixtape, and everything else that's to come. I build yes. my relationships. Everybody know me now. The new generation is knowing me. Mm-hmm. It's like, I bet. So uh, definitely a lot of lessons learned throughout the years. Yes. And I mean, I feel like it, it kind of happened for the best because yeah. as the time was growing, you know, some of the time you may have been saving face, you know, not really being as active as you would have wanted to be, but you taking notes, you learning, you keeping up with the trends, you know exactly what's going on. You still in the know, clearly, because everybody's still tapped in. Y'all got me here. Y'all exactly. Here. I mean, we still tapped yeah, in. So, I mean, clearly it, it really still works. So this time around, I know you back into the music and everything. So what's different? Wow, experience. Mm. Experience, and I got bit by sharks. Mm. So I was there. In order to be a shark, you got to swim with them. See mm-hmm. me? I've been swam. I've been ran. I've been bit. So it's like now I know everything that needs to be known, and this is why I'm grateful for all the shit that happened to me because since it happened to me at such a young age, right. it's never going to happen again. And on top of that, I know what it's like to have it all, and to lose everything and be at negative 60,000. Because that's mm-hmm. another thing. It was 60 bands plus 30. So I know what it's like to be at negative 60,000 mm-hmm. and come right back up in four months and be able to still be breathing. Like So now it's a little different because now I'm humble. Mm-hmm. At the time, I was not humble. I would volley people, kids. I would volley people. Like, <laughs> I, I would, nothing was off yeah, limits. Yeah, nothing was off limits. I ain't care to go to jail for fighting. Now it's like, now nah, you have a nice day. Yeah, like, as long as you don't touch me, we good. Because, you know, self-defense all of a sudden is legal Man. to do shit, right? Wink, wink. Right, but, we know. Feel me? So it's like now, because all this happened to me, I got so humble mm-hmm. that I learned. I was always the type to treat the CEO like a janitor. So that's never, I don't mean that humbleness. I just mean in the type of way where I don't make enemies no more. Mm-hmm. And I understand that all these sayings is real. Like, keep your friends close, enemy close, no place like home. Little is more. Like, all these sayings is mm-hmm. real. Because mm-hmm. 
I understand why people say keep your friends close and enemies closer because your enemies, no matter how much you want to dub somebody, some way, somehow they can help you. Mm -hmm. But you got to be smart and know you bit me once, you ain't going to bite me again. You feel me? But now I know where to place you at. Right. So it's like, for example, me. I know a lot of people talk bad shit about me because of Facebook. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But I never judged the, the people that spoke about me because now they don't know what they do because they don't know who they talking upon. Like, they don't know me, so I get it. Like, judgment is real. Like, mm -hmm. you might not know somebody. If your friend, your best friend is telling you something about somebody, you don't know them. So you're going to go with what your friend is telling you. Right. So I learned not to do none of that. I learned to be egoless, to be prideless, to be more in a point that is like, all right, if you treat me bad, I know how to treat you, but I ain't going to treat you the same. So you got to at least know there's good people out there. Mm -hmm. So now it's just different because I got experience. I know what I missed out. Like, for example, in the Facebook days, mm -hmm. what I was supposed to do was make a mixtape and put it on that Piff. Mm -hmm. And in that Piff, I would have blown up. And I would have been sitting right with fucking Nicki Minaj. That's facts. We would have been... Eating and hurraying and hurraying. But at the time, yep. I didn't know about none of that because I was such a homebody. Mm -hmm. I know about World Star. I know about that piff. I know about that. So now I understand, no, this is about marketing. Mm -hmm. This is about money. Mm -hmm. Money, power, respect. You could be broke and have the littest song ever, but it's not going to go anywhere unless you got connections. Right. So that's what it's about. Okay, well that that was a word. Yeah. That was a word for sure. So, Thank you. what do you think about like the current state of music right now? I'm a, I'm a, I mean, okay, you took the deep side. So, for for the people out there that's watching, I'm going to give a little context cuz I'm really interested in knowing what you think. Ash is from the Boogie Down Bronx. Yes. We already know like what's going on with the Bronx drill scene. I saw you in the Be Love video. I saw you. She, she I can you want me to it. Uh -huh. I saw you. But, so yes, I'm so curious. Like, what do you think about what's going on? All right. So honestly, people get creative in their own way, right? So you see, the Bronx drill is a bunch of um kid like kids because they're kids. Mm -hmm. They're kids. They're mm -hmm. youngins. You know. Yeah. Like. Even though, yeah, they want to be grown men because they do got grown man money and they probably got a grown man dick too. I know it. I know Ooh. it. But, <laughs> yeah, no, facts, facts. I haven't geeked none of nah, them yet. I know it. But, Hold on, sis. What's tea? <laughs> ain't no tea yet. I'm going to see something real quick. But, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> just like I said, feelings, right? You see how I said um, rapping is distinguished by my feelings. So it's like all these kids, they probably do got mad beef. Mm -hmm. But something in their spirit, when spirit talks, you can't ignore it. For sure. So something in their spirit knows that they're destined to be artists. So they taking that and put in all the grimy shit behind it, which mm -hmm. is cool. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand negativity when negativity comes right back times more. So it works. Yeah. But if you see one of them dead at 24, it can't, oh, he was a good kid. Because it becomes, and we don't wish that on nobody. We send blessings and prayers to everybody. And we're not talking about the gang. Of course, okay, no, 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 no. You, no. you we, speaking generally. We're talking about the, you know, UK rappers too. And it, it all started with drill. It's just, you need to be careful mm -hmm. the energy you put out. And once you become a very big subject, the more you talk, the faster it comes back. Because you're put in a high pedestal. Mm -hmm. I love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I actually do love it because I know they're not dumb. I know they're not talking this drill shit and not going to pop out with their gang. Right. But I also need them to understand that you in a higher level already. Mm -hmm. The devil will try to bring you more beef and try to put you in your op's face mm -hmm. that's also lit like you mm -hmm. to bring both of y'all down at that very moment. Mm -hmm. So I love what they doing, but I hate the disrespect. Okay. I hate the disrespect. Like the so... So what you mean, like, when it comes to, like, speaking on deck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you read my mind. Yeah. yeah, like, speaking on the deck, because that's really fighting words. And when mm -hmm. you're from New York, the Bronx, fuck a fight. We're taking you out. Like, mm -hmm. that's facts. We're taking you out. But that's where you need to understand. You got things to lose now. Mm -hmm. It's not the same no more. Yeah, you rapping that slick talk, but stay slick and protected. Mm -hmm. Don't stay slick and then pop out to a spot in the Bronx because your friend invited you there. Right, right, Now you right. get set up, or don't get slick, and you pop out on a shorty, and now you get set up by an opt-out. Like, mm -hmm. You feel me? So opt-out yeah. is crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, you get set up from an opt-out, and then now you shot. Oh, I got robbed. I you knew better. Right. You knew better. So 
that's why I say I do love it because I understand it's really coming from their soul. I know they want to talk that talk. Mm -hmm. But I also know y'all teddy bear. If y'all mm -hmm. want to be loved and comforted, and y'all want to be friends with everybody, but y'all can't. Right. Because once you talk that talk, see me, I'll talk that talk and say sorry. No, once they guess. talk that talk, they got to stand on no, it. No, they stay in it. Yeah. See me, I'll say sorry. Like, hey, you know what? My fault, but... But no, they, that's pride what niggas got. So they, they pride is not going to let them say sorry. They're going to straight up, man, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, even if they know they wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know how lit it would have been? I would have loved it and respected it more if they was faking the beef. Mm. Yeah. Really? Why Why you say that? Yeah, because if they was faking the beef, remember, fans are fanatics. Mm -hmm. Fans and addicts. So a, a dick, an addict, is somebody that's addicted to bullshit. Mm -hmm. Or addicted to something they love. Right. So a, f a fan is somebody that's addicted to your craft, somebody that looks up to you, that idolizes you. And that's probably like the 72% mm -hmm. of the music industry with the fans. Mm -hmm. Then the 15% is the real niggas. Mm -hmm. The real niggas is the one that respect you. They listen to your craft. They know you lit, but they're not a fan. Okay. They know, nah, you regular like me, you shit like me, but I respect you. Mm -hmm. Those are the 50%. Then you got the 8% that is the ones that put them on, and then the 2% that is, man, I don't know who the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but <laughs> you're doing your thing? Bet. You feel me? <laughs> so the fans, remember, the fans want to show. Right. So, let's say all the OGs come together and be like, all right, y'all, so we're going to do this for the fans. But us, when we go to Powerhouse, when we go to Revolt, when we go to... Um, rolling we, Loud. Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud. Rolling <laughs> fucking Loud. We know we got real executives to present and act accordingly to. Mm -hmm. You think these white people want to spend nine... Yo, there's $90 million sitting out there from one person that will invest in you. But you, when you become a liability, it becomes a dub. Yep. And people, yeah, it's cute. Yeah, you tough, but you being tough to a bunch of broke people. Because yep. the fans is, not that the, all the fans is broke, but the ones that want to see you negative is low frequency. That's facts. Absolutely. Anybody that want to see you fight, anybody that's, that's um, what you say that? Like, a, like trying to, what's that word? When you what? trying to... Like, instigate. instigate. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to instigate something, that's low-frequency energy where it's Talk like, about it. nigga, why you don't fight for me then? Go ahead. Here, I'll give you 10 bands. Go fight. I bet you they don't go fight. Mm -hmm. But they want you to risk it all mm -hmm. and lose it all. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. With the drill shit, with what's going on with the music, I love it. Mm -hmm. But the disrespect, I hate it. So now, okay. So let's say, I feel like personally, with the whole drill shit, they are disrespectful, but this is also their real life. They talking about right. their real life shit. Right. So now, the alternative, let's say you have a lit rapper who you know can make it, they got the flow, they got the sound. What do you think about ghostwriting? So if they're not going to talk about, you know, the shit that they actually going through, what are your thoughts on having a ghostwriter? All right, so if you really could rap, mm -hmm. I don't think it's wrong if you have a ghostwriter. Okay. Like, for example, if you really got bars and you already proved yourself and you done went hard and you want somebody to ghostwrite your record, shit, that they doing 50% of your job. Mm -hmm. That all you got to worry about is the performing part. Mm -hmm. I never knock ghostwriters, but I do knock it. I knock an artist that dead ass think they like the bestest. And it's like, no, your writer is the bestest. They're not even writing their shit. Mm -hmm. your, your writer is the bestest, but you can't knock it all the way because the way you perform it, still brought the attention. Okay. And it's like, you putting money in that ghostwriter pocket. So it's like, who knows if that ghostwriter been wanting to rap all their life, but they never made it because they probably didn't have to look. Mm -hmm. They don't got the voice. Mm -hmm. And their money is really coming from a record that they wrote for somebody. I respect that. Okay. Because I genuinely appreciate the artist helping that writer. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, not ghostwriting because especially we in a new generation. So mm -hmm. it's not like rap is dead rap anymore. Mm -hmm. Dead ass. Like, <laughs> I mean, you're not it, wrong. Yeah, like, and that's what wrong. I'm trying to still keep a part of, like bring rap back. Where is the Cassidy's, the, the real bars type of time? Like Cassidy, that nigga had bars where it was straight up rap, but you see Cassidy. Cassidy is always going to be a legend, mm -hmm. but... It's hard for him to make a song with the new generation because it's like, oh, these youngsters only want to rap about like this. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Adapt. You gotta adapt. It's like if we go cave, if we go fucking get knocked down and we stay in a cave one day and get lost in a cave. What? <laughs> oh no, I need a city. I need an Uber. No, you better learn how to fucking. <laughs> 
You learn how to make some fire, like right. So that's what it's about. All right. So do you think that people usually cat like where does your fan base now lie more in your music or in your Instagram influence? Now you know they love me. Just period. Period. I love my fan base. My yes, my young ass supporters. Yes, mm. like they so loyal, and they so loyal because I think it's because I'm authentic. Mm-hmm. Like I've never hid shit from them. Like let me tell you something. Instagram, I'm a whole different person than who I am on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Snapchat, I'm a whole different person than who I'm on Facebook, and Facebook, I'm a whole different person than who I am on TikTok. Okay. So the real ones, which is like 200K real ones, they follow me on all of them. Mm-hmm. But then you got my TikTokers, that's 100,000. Then you got my Facebook, that's 700K. Mm-hmm. Then you got my new gram, that's 17K. But then you got the Snap, and they still find me. Right, right, right. So it's like, they they always, and I try to be real real with them. Like, I pray for my supporters. Like, you see me, like, yo, send me your names. Like, Snapchat, that's where you find me at the release. I be telling y'all not supported. I be like, y'all better be telling y'all <laughs> shit. Y'all ask me dumbass questions. So my Snapchatters are the strongest fan base I have because I'll be bombing them. Okay. But they fuck with me because they know I'm bombing them for a reason. And I mean, you're interacting with them. It's a lot of people, you know, that are out there, you know, they making a name for themselves and they're so tapped in, but they not as they not. connected with the people who no, really I fuck really with them. No, I really be like, I play too much. I be like, hey guys, how y'all doing? And I'll pause for like 12 seconds. Mm-hmm. So if they watching, it's like, oh, I'm doing good, Ash, and you? Oh, I bet. So right, like, right. I talk to them. Fake, um, Instagram, I'm fake as hell. Not fake. I'm fake as hell. No, Instagram and what I mean by I'm fake as hell because I can't be silly. Okay. On Instagram. So you think Instagram is more serious? It's more yeah, business Yeah, no, oriented. Instagram is super business and judgmental as fuck. Mm-hmm. Fuck, 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 fuck. But it's okay because we need that balance. Mm-hmm. So Instagram is where I try to like just show them the realness as far as my business. Right. So business is like if you see me since you've been following me, you know niggas is outside. Oh, absolutely. You feel me? Like, I was in Revolt. I went to Atlanta. I just was in the um, Lady Gaga. Um, oh, yeah. I saw that. That was, that. That was so a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. That's me doing something new now. Mm-hmm. Tapping into the um, movie industry. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, Instagram is where I got to shit on everybody. Because mm-hmm. y'all don't fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Instagram. Not y'all. Y'all, y'all live. No, y'all live. of course. But Instagram, generally. Instagram. Like, I've had lit fucking people that ass unfollow me in... I can read people, so I know when it's because I'm being negative. Mm-hmm. So it's like I've apologized to real famous people. Like, listen, I'm sorry that you don't follow me. Probably I'm too grimy for your gram and your frequency, but I need some people I got to shit on right now in Bali because mm-hmm. they did me dirty. Mm-hmm. So that's where I've learned to balance mm-hmm. being a good person. Right. Because Instagram, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to see you grimy and mean and shit. That's where everybody goes to. Facebook, in the other hand, I don't know what the fuck y'all getting from me. So, I mean, Facebook is your stomping grounds. Like, thank you. If you really want to get technical, Facebook is your stomping exactly. grounds. Like, Facebook is where, where the hounds is at. Absolutely. So Facebook is where I know your sister and your aunt. Because, you know, we family on Facebook. I see mm-hmm. your kid grow up. That's my nephew. Mm-hmm. And, I even know the grandma, too. Yeah, I know the grandma, too. That's yeah. why your grandma probably heard of me, too. Like, <laughs> feel me? So... Instagram is where business is at. Facebook is where I will come at your cousin just mm-hmm. to get at you. Snapchat is the authentic Ash. And TikTok is the fun Ash. Like, that's why I be silly and shit, but it works. So what do you think about like the whole TikTok trends? Like, would you, Do you feel like you would make a song that will go like, viral on TikTok? Um, TikTok is a very good marketing spot for your music to go viral. Yeah. And again, I don't knock nothing. I'm going to be honest. I don't knock nothing. It's like Coyle Ray the mm-hmm. other day. She was saying, oh, it's like Nikki. Oh, stay on TikTok. It's like, relax. Yeah. Feel me? And we still bobs, bobs. We here. Chill out. But it's still an authentic program that will get you lit. That's yeah. why Coy, I be feeling bad for shorty because it's like people be trying to knock her. She not an artist because she's a TikToker, bitch. People can't TikTok. Absolutely not. And people can't make music that the people want to tune into. And TikTok is 10 billion people on TikTok. Hello. So I don't knock nobody hustles. But TikTok for me, mm-hmm. Ash, is where I laugh at myself. Like, just the other day I did that dance. Ah. <laughs> Hold on, Jenny. Ah. <laughs> I was laughing at myself yesterday. 
like I did it for the first time because TikTok, I feel like it gets your silly side out. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, oh well, somebody on TikTok will, you feel me? So right. that's what I say. As long and an advice I do give people is my niggas, keep your fan base on every social media because TikTok Absolutely. is, they might not fuck with you on Instagram, but if your Instagram get deleted, those 300,000 on TikTok, they're going to find you. Mm -hmm. You better get silly on the gram a little because now you got to entertain the TikTokers. But mm -hmm. it works. And that's what always kept me lit. Because mm -hmm. my Instagram got deleted eight times. But Facebook, I still got my... Eight is, eight is so crazy. <laughs> that shit is crazy. Eight is crazy, but yeah, like... Okay, so speaking of Instagram, I know that's where you keep things very business. But... And I quote, you say you a female with a male mindset. Yes, I am. What does that mean? To me, it means I'm going to dog y'all men the way y'all dog us. And y'all going to be so heartbroken. I'm going to look at y'all in your eyes. You hear me? Y'all going to be so heartbroken because y'all going to try to call me a thought, but I got you wet. Ooh, she said, I'm going to pull a you on you. I'm going to pull a you on you. How and you like you're not going to like it because you wasn't used to that. See, us females, we really be heartbroken. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Mm -hmm. Because we give all. And it's not even that we give all because we want y'all. We don't give a fuck about your money. That's one thing. These niggas, y'all don't even got money. Y'all Let's don't talk money. about it. Y'all don't even, Let's know, talk about don't even it. know what to do with y'all money. Like, y'all got money, but y'all spend it on a mirrors and shit. No, I like to go skydiving. I like to go on a helicopter ride that costs four hundred dollars, but you not because that's too much money. You Niggas the hype. love saying bitches after the money. That's the money that they don't got. Nobody to spend care on about bitches. your money. No nope. niggas yep. care about experience because what you can Absolutely. do for me is I can do for you back to the daddy issue shit. A lot of niggas. Oh girl, hold on, cause you that that hit. I'm gonna let you know what I mean by daddy. That hit. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know what I mean by that. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> let, I'm gonna let you know because there's a lot of people with daddy issues and it's okay. But child with daddy issues is who get. I get grease too, and I got, and I don't got it. Mm -hmm. So imagine when you do have it, it becomes. But we gonna talk about that after. But back to y'all niggas. <laughs> nah, at twenty six, I ain't gonna lie. It's time to be lit, and I've been a lover girl all my life. But I'm honest. Mm -hmm. I wish hoes was honest. Like if you don't fuck with bitches, and you know you just wanna fuck, be real. Like you see me. Like a nigga asked me like the other day. The nigga asked me. He's like, yo ass, so. Don't be tight if you see this. But, yo, <laughs> he asked me, he was like, yo, Ash, like, let's say, you know, I'm lit. He said, it. he's like, I'm lit. If I go out with you, what's up? I'm like, oh, no, you a hoe. Mm. I kept it a buck. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, you a hoe, but I like, no, I got hoes. I don't need you posting me. And it, and luckily, because I'm so neutral, I mm -hmm. couldn't be outside and post a nigga. Right. And they not going to think I'm fucking them. Right. But we know what we doing. Mm -hmm. But chill. Mm -hmm. And that's when niggas don't like that. Because now I'm doing that to you and it becomes that. So, yes, I have a men mentality now because I was such a queen right. to these men. And I still got grease. And it came from the broke ones. Because the broke ones love saying, oh, I want a bitch that's going to stay down with me like this. Y'all still going to cheat. I've, Yo, I've been there. Y'all still going to cheat. Broke, y'all going to cheat. So if y'all cheated broke, imagine when y'all got mad bitches in y'all face ugly. Because you're still ugly. But yeah, <laughs> Love her. So. Absolutely. Keeping it a buck at 26 now is like, I learned. No, I'm going to grease y'all until I'm 29. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not 29. Yeah, 29. Said, okay, the 30s is different. 29. Not 29 because <laughs> I want to have kids. I want mad kids. So right. I've always been with you since 14. I've mm. been in love. Oh, damn. Imagine Can't that. relate. Imagine no. And I've really did relationships. I was a queen. Like, I really. Wow. Yo, you could cheat on That's how real it is. You, <laughs> that's how real it is. You could cheat on me, and I still look at it. I would still give you the benefit of the doubt, because I'm like, all right, well, we just started talking, so he probably think I'm grimy. Mm -hmm. I would still try to mend with them. like. But then I realized, no, it's not that y'all grimy. No, it's y'all always had trust issues and men. Their chromosome. Mm -hmm. That chromosome that they got that women don't, <laughs> uh -huh. it greases us. So wait, so what? So what's your thoughts about just dating while you're in the industry? How how has that been? Just all right overall. So lately, no. So let's talk about tw let's talk about fourteen to twenty five. Okay, that's a long Damn. time. That's years. eleven years. That's eleven years. Shit. So around that time, I was always dating low key men. 
Okay. Low key niggas. But then you got these low key insecure ass bastards. No fathers, because men got daddy Ooh. issues too. Let's not, let, yeah. Let's touch a bone real quick. Y'all got daddy issues too. Y'all dad left y'all too. But. I know how it feels. But no, it's okay. No, we're going to talk about that after. Cause we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. But the problem is here. What happens is they sit here and have them same trust issues mm-hmm. to everybody. Yeah. See me, no. I treat everybody as a new human being. I just met you. I can't blame you for what my ex did. I'm going to make sure I treat you. Until you disappoint me, Mm -hmm. my energy with you is at a million. Mm -hmm. Until you disappoint me, it's it's your time to shine or it's your time to get dark again. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, when it comes to the industry, men, see, now at 26, I just started that. Mm -hmm. But then when we in in November, right? So September 23rd, I turned 26. And every year, I tell myself, I'm going to do something I ain't do last year. So last year, I was in a pimp. I was a simp. Uh-huh. Now I'm pimping. Now you pimping, yeah, pimping, pimping. 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 Like, uh-huh. But now with the industry niggas, it's a fun experience because industry niggas expect you to suck their dick mad fast. Absolutely not. Because Missed they're lit. That one. There was one industry nigga I dealt with at 24. Mm-hmm. And I don't lie, I gave son, I gave son a neck. <laughs> right? Gave it's son, okay, son. It is okay. This is a right? safe Before place. Before I even like, like really fucked him, right? Mm-hmm. But to me, it was, I don't know, I'm going to take second ass bitch, son. Every second. I mean, I'll be sucking just to see son real quick. <laughs> but... Yeah, no, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest you see, this is why we fuck with Ash. She yeah, real I'm bitch. I'm okay. I ain't gonna lie, son dubbed the shit out of me. Not after. Mm-hmm. It was probably like five times after, but I know why. Because a man, imagine a female coming and sucking their dick the first night and leaving. Mm-hmm. Remember, I left him. Mm-hmm. I, sucked, I sucked it up and I left. Like he fell asleep and I left while he was sleeping. Hey, then you tip I left while he was sleeping. That ass, so. And then he woke up with like an asthma attack. They had to go to the hospital. Oh shit. my God. Wait, yeah, yeah. hold on. I can't make Watch shit up. He's going to be telling. I'm sorry, gang. I'm sorry. We lit. I mean, no but names. It's okay. Nah, he woke up with an asthma attack. And he wrote me the next day, like, bro, why you left? So I know, remember, niggas don't know you. Mm-hmm. So I know he probably look at me like, you dick sucking ass bitch. You're going to see it suck my dick <laughs> that good and then leave. And then I catch an asthma attack. And you're not even here to come for me, bitch. I get it. Yeah. But in my world, I know you lit. So it's like, I'm going to do something nobody ever did to you. Mm-hmm. And I know bitches probably want to, they, they going to suck it, but then they on your dick after. I ain't going to lie. After, once he dubbed me a little bit, like, I'm like, oh, I started, like, I, I did the whole, yo, what's wrong? Like, uh-huh. is it me? Like, but then I realized, no, it's not me. You're doing the me on me now. Hell yeah, that's that karma. reverse psychology. <laughs> Them niggas are trying to get you. That's where karma slapped the shit out of me because he dead ass pulled the me on me. And mm-hmm. at the time, I was such a lover girl. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand it because this was my first industry nigga. Mm. And I was trying to pull a him on him, but I was still a lover girl, so it didn't work on me. So he's Ooh. one nigga that could be like, bitch, I had that bitch and I dubbed her. And you're right, but you're the only one, so be happy. But after that, <laughs> yeah, he the only one. He the only one. After that, at 26, now I got these industry niggas, but I'm taking them out. And you I know my worth now. So shit. it's like, I learned the game. Like, it's like, if you want to fuck, I'm going to make you spend a little bit. Like, I'm going to make you spend. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, like, I could take myself out on a date. Mm-hmm. I could buy myself Louis. I could buy myself a tr- I could take you on a trip. Mm-hmm. So now it became more like, nah, let me take you out and let me have you blushing. You know what it is? Because the niggas not used to that. Exactly. The niggas not used to that generation. at all. Mm-hmm. They be generation. real surprised. They get them a little wet. Yeah. If you taking wet. them out. They wet. they wet. Nah, niggas, if you take them out on the day, they blushing. Mm-hmm. They start falling in love. And it's like, I'm not here for that. So I'm 29. I'm sorry. I'm just here to dog you out. Yeah, I'm here to dog you out. <laughs> And I'm sorry that my past is why I'm like this now. But fuck all of y'all. Fuck all of y'all. Until 29. At 29, when I become a queen again and mm-hmm. a princess. I mean, you still are a queen. Let's not do that. <sighs> you still are. Don't do not do that. You still are a I'm queen. I'm a nigga. Now nah, I'm a nigga with the niggas. You're a queen with nigga tendencies. True, but no. A real queen is not fucking. Oh. That's facts. I'm going to be honest. Queen? Damn, yeah, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Mm. Nah, she got it. You got to be in a relationship. A queen. Okay. Okay. Queen is a majesty. 
Anybody's gonna want to say they fucking the queen. Think about it. You right. Fucking the king's bitch. Hold on. <laughs> so it becomes a queen number right now, and it's funny because that's why I got this tattoo, right? I got a crown. Mm. And it was because any nigga that ain't call me a queen, I'm going to tell you, fuck you, or, or you're going to kiss it. That little mm. lady, lady, that little cute kiss. You know, that little, little cute little kiss. Mwah. <laughs> Feel me? So, but after, I'm like, no, I don't want to be a queen no more. I got a nigga, y'all. But the niggas that I'm niggering and out, <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all got karma. Y'all probably ain't face yet. And this is where it's me. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah. So, just getting back to the music, just so that we know what's going on. What can we look forward to? Like, you back on the scene, you back outside, you been dropping shit, you been performing. What can we look forward to? to You know I ain't shit. I be performing songs that's not out yet. I mean, but you giving the people a little taste. Right. Right now, I got two albums I'm working on. The first one is called Better Late Than Ever. Okay. I feel it fits the substance because, you know... I haven't dropped an album. I never dropped a mixtape. I've never dropped an album. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do better late than ever. The next one is The Heart of the City. Because mm. I feel like I'm real. So it's like, I'm I'm going to teach y'all some shit y'all never thought would be taught. Back from the female and the male industry. And I have a mixtape called The Life of Young Ash. Rest in peace to my motherfucking Instagram. Because <laughs> it was called The Life of Young Ass. Mm-hmm. So I got three projects that I'm dropping in 2022 in the nice. first five months. So I'm going to drop the album March. I'm going to drop the second album April. And I'm going to drop the um, mixtape around June. Okay. Summertime vibe. So let's keep our fingers crossed because April 12th is my birthday. Maybe yeah. it'll get oh, dropped on that day. Birthday yeah, gift. So what can we look forward to with these albums? Like, what's the sound sound like? It's going to be so versatile. That's mm. one thing I was never put in a box because I rap. So mm-hmm. I'm a rapper before anything, but I also explore dancehall. Right. I also explore Spanish Latin. Mm-hmm. I also explore Afrobeats. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go international. We want the world. We don't want the projects. Absolutely. The projects, I'll leave that for the niggas and the niggas that I'll just put under the wing and it's like, just post me real quick. Mm-hmm. But I want international. We want to go worldwide. I got a big secret I'm going to put out. But that's Ooh. 2023. I'm going to put it out. Oh, two years, girl. You can't keep us waiting that yeah. long. That's we a lot. We're going to manifest real quick. Okay. I got something big coming. We own the property. We own the land. Yes. We're going to create a new future for people. That where, generational wealth. Exactly. Where it's about creating the new because the Masons, mm. y'all know who y'all are, and I just became a target by saying that, but it's all right. We all love peace and genuine and good It's all energy. good vibes, good energy, right? They've been taking over, so I feel like they, they need, we, we got to knock them doors down. Okay, okay, okay. So, like, when it comes to your new albums, you don't got to give us too much. But can we look forward to any collabs with people? You know, nah. No? Not yet? Okay. Yet, but not yet. I'm going to put y'all on. Okay. Basically, right now, so I live in the moment. So, I ain't going to lie. A lot of people don't fuck with Ash. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I intimidate it. Hmm. Well, you know, when you the littlest bitch in the room, they feel like I'm not bringing her around because she's going to steal the shine, but they don't know I'm real thankful. Like, yeah, it's like if you, you take real me, genuine. No, I'm thankful. Fuck a genuine. Ooh. I'm thankful. If you okay. take me somewhere and you have me meet somebody and you change my life for that moment, I'm going to thank you. And I don't give a fuck if we beef the next day. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel people don't know that or they're not used to that. So they think like when I come around, they, they think I'm a user mm. or they think I want to take they shine. No, I'm going to take your shine because I'm still lit. <laughs> right. And it's me. I'm always be me, but I'm going to take your shine and multiply it because you gave it to me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, look, Kistar. I took all his fans, but Kistar, we follow each other right now. And I know he, his ego probably be tight when he hear it, but... He needs so so no, you created the dance hall ash. He gave me young ass. She gave mm-hmm. me that name. Mm-hmm. So it don't matter if we cool or not, I'm going to always give you thanks. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't do that because they feel like, oh, don't fuck that nigga. Nah, 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 nah. You could do me greasy. You could try to kill my moms. But I know 
you did do something for me at that moment that did change my life. See, that just talks to your loyalty and your your genuineness. Because mm-hmm. if a nigga try to kill my moms, it's clip. Thank for you. You feel me? No. <laughs> it's it's going to be clip, but I'm going to still thank you. Fuck the thank you. Yeah, you the same way you said, fuck the Jay Fuck you the thank see? you. Nah, I'm a thank you. But no, that just speaks to how appreciative you are yeah, for, you know, the platforms that people really, you know, the way that people can really elevate you. Yeah. That just speaks a lot to your character. Nah, for listen, sure. And it's not fake. My face never fell off. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I was really a fake bitch, like I used to have friends that used to think I wasn't, I don't talk like this. I dad have friends. Oh no, it's, she I does. I friends that <laughs> thought does. like, Oh, this bitch and I like that. And no funny shit, I got, there was one time I got jumped, and it was like, nah, I'm still like that. Mm-hmm. Y'all not running me off this bump. And that's what those same friends learned. Like, all right, she's not fake. Like, mm-hmm. She still talk, I don't know why I talk like this. Like, I mean, because it's you. you yeah, it's like, who cares? My mom Dominican. Yeah. My mom listens to bachata all day. My dad is cool as hell. But I, I that. Mm-hmm. So me being in the Bronx, I guess it was just my nigga. I grew up in the Bronx. This is how I talk. This right. is not fake. This is not a fraud. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna call you out on your bullshit. If I don't like something, I'm gonna speak up for myself. If you do something that's weird, I'm gonna call you out in the moment. Mm-hmm. Cause that's another thing. A lot of people like to tell you shit behind, like behind the scenes. Wait thirty minutes. No, tell me now. Mm-hmm. If you don't like something I do, you put me to the side. You put your arm over me. You wing me. Cause I'm doing some. That's some real shit. shit. And you be like, yo, Ash, no funny shit, you, you, you being weird. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wait, how? Because I know you. Mm-hmm. So if you're being weird and you're telling me I'm being weird, it's like, wait, bro, how? Especially if you older than me. If you at my age notice how I asked you, too. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, how old are you? Once mm-hmm. you told me your age, I'm like, oh, it's lit. Because you, you're my age. Right. But if you're older than me and acting phony, you're never making it in life. Mm-hmm. But if you're younger than me, you got more money than me, it becomes like, all right, what you know that I don't? Mm-hmm. So I always, tr- I don't got pride. I don't got ego. If you put me on, I'm going to let you know you put me on. Right. Yes. Bree, Bree, I mean, that's all I got to tell. <laughs> Y'all need to know this. No, talk of the town is mad lit. She got me on this shit. And I really was thankful. I was grateful. And I know. Th- and I'm appreciative of you. Likewise, I'm very appreciative. That I know this in. is going to open mad doors because I need you to know you lit. So... It becomes Shout the out to Kowee. Shout Kowee. out to Kowee. Yes, queen. And she's, don't worry, there's more lot coming. Absolutely. And that's where I want people to know. As long as somebody give you your flowers, luckily if men give you flowers and you're not thankful, you dump tight because God ain't giving it to you after because God sent that man to give it to you. Mm-hmm. So that's just my vibe. I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table. I like, I like steak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like steak. And lobster, So, too. we don't eat cheap. There's no cheap steak out there unless you go to Bravo's with they fucking day up there. Yeah. I saw a $1.25 for Lehman Young. I said, y'all oh, can eat nah. that. Y'all can kiss my I ass. I want like, that. Keep me away from that. Because why so, is it $1.25? Thank you. You know what steak costs. You know what lobster costs. So, that's just what it's about. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, shit, you really been dropping some gems on us, sis. We cannot go without saying that. I mean, it's like, even if you go on your Instagram, you know, you have the motivational talk. I'm not even going to lie. I'm dating myself, and I told you I've been in tune since mad long. But even from, like, old Navy boxers, you turn that shit into a whole track. Hell yeah. So, like, Ash, you've always been just on a positive frequency. Always. Always spreading the love. Always making sure, like, you just... You know, so in tune with what's going on, but from yes. a positive way. So Always. we can't go without acknowledging that. Thank you, Queen. So before we wrap up, of course, I gotta ask you. I know you say you fucking with the Bronx drill. I know you fucking with the Latin scene. You fucking with it all. I and love since you're, over there. I'm gonna since, you know, I'm very curious. As I just got put on Zim yesterday. Though. I've been, no, I've been watching some. Ooh. Oh. 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 Oh.
tea. What's the difference? I feel like society is fucking society. Y'all can kiss my ass. But (laughs) it's like, all right, you feel me? Like, let's say a man is dating a youngin. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem when they older than 18. But you gotta think about it. Like, you was just 16 two years ago. I'm 26. Remember, I'm 26. The difference is I've met some young niggas with grown men responsibilities. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no funny shit. Where they sat here, I went house hunting with these niggas. They 19, and I'm like, yo, you doing some shit I haven't done yet. But that's because I started life late. Remember, I was strict. My parents were strict. Mm-hmm. I didn't start life till I was 23. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know, I take public transportation so I was 21. Mm-hmm. So it's like, crazy. it's like, all right, you know what? The only problem with me is, is the age. It's yeah. knowing I'm 26 and you might be 19, 18, 20. Knowing you was in high school three years ago. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is not me saying that I don't see the wrong. problem. I see I see it because I'm the same way. Like, I'm sorry. I can't date anybody who's that much younger than me. But it's just, I think it's very interesting. If you got grown man money and grown mm-hmm. man responsibilities, I think I could fuck with you. Okay, and I saw that I little wink. So it's somebody out there that she's talking to. I don't know, I think I can so. fuck with you because you talking big. Mm-hmm. And it's this, you 17. 17. Nah, 17 is old. Exactly. You 17 is old. Don't lie about your age, kids. Because there's 17 years old out there that's grown man money too, but y'all lying. Mm-hmm. So old we'll Fripp, you become a red flag. Don't lie to a bitch. When you 19, it becomes like, all right, if you got grown man money, if you working... For some reason, I know you're still young. Mm-hmm. You're I mean, you could feel it. I mean, yeah. like like we were talking it's about experience. earlier. Come, right. It's experience. It so, I have so much more experience than these youngins that I never want to be grimy and take advantage. Mm-hmm. So, I, I always want to be honest with them. So, that's the only problem I have where it's like they be facading. These young niggas with money be faking it. Like, they think they ready for a grown bitch, but they don't know we will turn you inside out. Ruin your whole life. We ruin you. You're going to ruin your life. <laughs> and you're not going to understand what we mean by that because we're not toxic. No, 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 We're not no, toxic, no, 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 but we're grown. We know, yo, you got 100K, I want 50. And that's just on some grown woman shit, for Because real. that 50, I'm going to turn it to 500K. Hello. So if you got 100K, I want 50 because I'm going to turn that into 500K. But if you got trust issues, now you're going to bring your young shit. Oh, bitch, trying to use me. I'm trying to oh, elevate you. Let's talk you. about it. Thank you. Because at the end of the day, a man needs a woman and a woman needs a man. So whether it's five minutes we link, in those five minutes I told you, make sure you're getting your YouTube money. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're growing. Make sure you stop beefing. And make sure you get your fucking nails done. Ooh. Let me hide my hair. Make sure you get no, 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 no. <laughs> Bitch, my nails. Let me, let me, let me hide my hair. No, pedicures. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And make sure them toes is done. <laughs> and they don't understand that. So that's where I feel when you are youngin' and you think you're grown, you're gonna meet the right grown bitch. She's yeah. gonna break your heart. Yeah. That's me right now. So I'm 29. All right. So we're gonna wrap this up. Let me hear your top five artists right now. I'm putting you on the spot. Top five. All right. With? Number one, Nicki Minaj. Period. Mm-hmm. Number two, Mulatto. Okay. She's a queen. Big Lotto. Fuck that. She's gonna be mad at me. Big Lotto. Big Lotto. Number three, I'm gonna give it to Cardi B. Okay. I'm, give it, I'm not allowed. I was a hater at first, but it was because a lot of people was comparing me to her. Really? So my, but that was when I was 19, 20, and I wanna put that out here, here. And this is the first time I say some shit like that. Mm-hmm. But I wanna put that out here, here because I let the fans talk to my ego. Mm. So that was when I was 19, 20, Cardi. Chill. We met already. <laughs> So 1920, yes, I was a hater, but I'm going to give it to her. No, she's a queen. Absolutely. She's the first that's breaking a lot of things. The fourth one, little baby, I love him. Not Mm -hmm. on some fucking loving. No, I love him Mm -hmm. as some real genuine, real fan. I love him. I love him as Mm -hmm. a fan. And the last one, I want to give it to um, Devin. Young Devin. Young Devin, okay. Nice, nice. Young nice, Devin, nice, for nice, some nice. reason, her spirit always speaks to me. Even in Rolling Loud, I brought her up. Like, I don't know, her spirit always called me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those five, I gave you an exclusive by mentioning that Cardi shit. But I could be real because there was one time I went off because the fans 
they basically was on some like, oh, Cardi is living the dream, young Ash, where she could live. See, that's what I don't get. And yeah. and this goes back to what you was talking about before with the people who's instigating, just spreading that negativity and stuff. I because fell. why can't we both win? Exactly. Why so can't we both win? So at the time I fell, when I was 19, 20, this was when I was ruthless, when I was all the way with the shits. It was like, fuck, I don't want to be like that, bitch. But as I got older, I'm like, nah, she fucked up. You fucked up, because now you're going to have to look at her face and say one day you took mad shit. Mm -hmm. And I could do that, because I'm like that. So it is what it is. At least I'm real. I gave y'all that exclusive. I Absolutely. gave y'all that John and Cardi my fault. <laughs> Not your fault. It was the fans fault. Ego is big. But, yeah. But Nikki is always number one to me, because I grew up watching her. Mm -hmm. I used to get in trouble watching this bitch. That ass. Mm -hmm. My uncles used to be like, I over there listening to Ho Ho Ho, seeing her coming three claws. Like, that's the best <laughs> I am. So, that's the only reason I give number one to Nikki always, because growing up, I used to get in trouble listening to this bitch at 13, 14, and everybody after, yeah, the levels matter, the numbers matter, I put y'all on y'all levels because it's a matter, but okay. little baby, I need to see you in concert. So, Jada, respect, always love, queen, but <laughs> no, that ass, because bitches be funny, no, I need you to know, it's not like that, it's fan, I'm a fan. Of course, of course. That, so. I mean, shit, because Miami and Santana and um, Miami said she'll let little baby and like baby that. and um. I ain't like that. But so it's all know, respect, you know? JT, I fuck with JT. She said period to me when I was in revolt. I always fucked with JT, Miami. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And you could put this up there, Ooh. too. I don't know. Her vibe never gave me that vibe. Really? Because Carisha? Carisha, yeah. I, I fuck with Carisha. Yeah. And I know she hate people calling her that. But, I, I mean, I fuck with her. I feel like she gives that that genuine energy. I know. I mean, she gets my utmost, utmost respect because she held down the city girls while JT was locked up. That's true. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I Don't always just look. Right up. Because I, like, that's true. I always look to her for that because it takes a lot for you to, you know, keep that presence, but you know, while face the face other part. For some reason, we're all so. I mean, it is what it is. You know, everybody's not going to be a cup of tea. And I, so, and I want y'all to know that. I mean, it, it's that's okay. okay. That is okay. All right, so you gave me a top five. We know what's coming out. Look forward to the EP, for the album, for the new shit that's coming out in 2022. Is there anything else you want to tell the people before we wrap up? I just up? want y'all to stay blessed. And I don't care how y'all feel about me because I don't feel no way about y'all. I don't care what y'all <laughs> think about me because I don't think about y'all neither. And um, if y'all see me, make sure y'all show respect because I will slap the shit out of y'all. That's facts. <laughs> no, that's facts. And this ain't even me lit because I'm not lit. Y'all still got like seven shots to get lit. But I just want y'all to know, come correct or don't come at all. All right, right best. So, yeah, that's all it is. As long as y'all know I don't need y'all. I came this far without y'all. And genuinely, I look at everybody with love. But if my spirit don't feel y'all, I just don't feel y'all. And I can't fake it until y'all prove me wrong. Okay, I mean, and that's a very valid point. I like point. to prove people. I feel like a lot of people don't like to prove themselves. No, mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. I prove myself every day. Mm -hmm. So if you don't prove yourself to me, you don't care about proving yourself to me, then guess what? 